Hi, I'm Jeff Klein, editor of Radiographics, and today I am pleased to have with us Dr. Nicholas Murray from the Department of Radiology at the Vancouver General Hospital of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, who is the first author of one of our featured papers in the current January 2019 issue of Radiographics, and his paper is entitled Dual Energy CT in the Evaluation of the Acute Abdomen. Dr. Murray, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much, Dr. Klein. It's a pleasure to be with you today uh, uh, presenting our paper on the CT of the acute abdomen. Well, it's a terrific paper, and I, wanna, I want to begin uh, just by describing uh, how the paper starts. So your paper begins with, with a brief review of some of the physics behind uh, dual energy CT acquisition, and in particular, how the various vendors approach spectral CT imaging and how uh, the images that we to interpret clinically that shows up on our packs are reconstructed and displayed. So I thought maybe you could talk through with us figure two, uh, which I think demonstrates these concepts on a, an axial dual energy image, which is taken through the kidneys. Yeah, uh, so just to remember the key concept of the dual energy CT imaging is to image every single body constituents with two different energy levels. Uh, the vendors have developed many uh, techniques to do that. Uh, some techniques you can use two different X-ray tubes paired with two detectors in order to obtain uh, different KV uh, data sets. Uh, some vendors will use a single X-ray tube paired with a layered detector capable of absorbing different energy levels. And the last technique will be to switch uh, the KV setting with a single X-ray tube. Um, uh, usually with the CT imaging, uh, we use approximately the um, uh, 90 kV imaging for the low kV data set and the 140, 150 kV uh, imaging for the high kV uh, data set. This uh, will allow to uh, uh, increase the spectral separation of different body constituents. Since every single body constituent or chemical elements will have their own signature, they will interact differently at different energy level. So the attenuation of these body constituents are what we call KV dependent or energy dependent. So that's one thing to keep in mind as we go through uh, these uh, important concepts. If we look at uh, figure two, uh, the, the first image represents the normal or conventional image you would get as if you were uh, to image a patient uh, using a 120 KVP regular conventional uh, CT of the abdomen. Uh, this image represents blending of the high KV image and the low KV uh, data set that will recreate a, a conventional CT. That's the type of image you will get in your patch system to uh, review the case, for example. Uh, if you want, you can also get those high and low KV images and one, how you can uh, separate them apart just by remembering that, uh, that iodine will become way denser at low KV data set. Uh, and the computer using a post-processing software, uh, the computer will be able to differentiate uh, the, the specific body constituents or body elements, especially iodine and calcium. Uh, they will be able, the computer will be able to separate them and then to isolate them, to uh, highlight them, or even to calculate their relative uh, concentration within a region of interest. If we look, for example, at the figure uh, D, represents the virtual non-calcium, non-contrast image where all the iodine-containing voxels are subtracted from the image. So you get the, the comparable image as if you were uh, uh, imaging the patient without IV contrast. Right. On figure E, you will get the iodine-only uh, images. All the iodine-containing voxels are only displaced using this image, and you can have a mix of those images where the iodine-containing voxels will be superimposed on the conventional CT uh, image, uh, creating the iodine overlay map. Uh, that's usually what we call the uh, material-specific applications, where you can display or remove specific elements within the uh, image you're showing into your back system. Terrific. Thank you for that. So uh, in your paper, the first system that you review uh, using dual energy CT uh, of the acute abdomen is the gastrointestinal system. Uh, let's talk a little bit about bowel pathology and, and review how dual energy CT can be more useful than single energy CT in evaluating inflammatory, neoplastic, and vascular conditions. You discussed the evaluation of mucosal hyperemia in, in active Crohn's disease uh, as depicted on virtual monoenergetic 
images that you illustrate with a case. Uh, you also suggest that you have uh, experience in your practice with the use of iodine maps and low KEV uh, virtual monochromatic images, which can help detect mucosal hyperemia, for example, that you would see in a patient with acute appendicitis, uh, which I guess, to my knowledge, has not been validated in clinical studies, but it sounds like you've got some uh, clinical experience with this. Can we look at figure four, which I think illustrates such a case? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, figure four is a, a really interesting case we have uh, recently in our practice. Um, it's a case of an acute appendicitis, uh, which was really early in the course of the, the, the pathology. The patient presented acutely with typical signs and symptoms of acute pen, uh, appendicitis. Uh, using the conventional CT images, uh, figure 4A, um, although the appendix was slightly larger than normal, approximately measuring uh, 10 or 11 millimeter, uh, there was no significant inflammatory changes seen surrounding this appendix, or uh, there was no complication for sure. Using uh, the iodine overlay uh, map in 4B, you can see a really subtle difference in enhancement uh, mural enhancement within the appendix compared to the adjacent uh, small bowel loops, if you look more centrally within the abdomen. Uh, using the low KV images at 40 KAV, uh, you can also see that the iodine within the, uh, the appendix wall is significantly brighter than the iodine or the mural uh, constituents of the adjacent bowel loops. So this means that there's something acute, there's some a mural enhancement uh, super added, added to this uh, appendicitis and which uh, raised uh, for sure the, uh, the possibility of an early acute appendicitis. Um, our team just published a, a, a really great article on the dual injury CT in differentiating non-perforated gangrenous appendicitis from uncomplicated appendicitis uh, using the low KV VMI and the iodine or really map where they demonstrated an increased sensitivity and accuracy at depicting early ischemic changes, which can be applied uh, to depicting early inflammatory changes in appendicitis or inflammatory bowel disease, as you mentioned before. Oh, terrific. So regarding bowel ischemia and hemorrhage, uh, a number of studies have shown that the utility of low KEV, uh, you know, virtual monochromatic images uh, from the dual energy acquisition uh, increases the conspicuity of sort of hypo or non-enhancing bowel wall. Uh, and similarly, iodine mapping aids in this distinction. Can we look at figure seven, uh, which illustrates this concept very nicely? Yeah, for sure. Um, another really interesting cases we had in our, our practice. Uh, uh, this is a case of a closed loop small bowel obstruction, clearly depicting, uh, depicted on this coronal uh, reformats here. Uh, in figure seven A, again, that's the normal conventional image you would get as if you were uh, imaging the patient at 120 kVp. Uh, using the uh, uh, low KV images, again, at 40 KAV, uh, you can see that the involved small bowel loops remains hyperattenuating. The iodine within the wall is preserved, meaning that this, uh, at the time of the, C the, the CT scan, the small bowel loop is not completely ischemic. It's not completely dead. And uh, the residual iodine can also be shown uh, on figure 7C uh, by highlighting the iodine-containing voxels on top of the or iodine overlay map. Although this, uh, as uh, many will know, a closed-loop uh, closed small bowel obstruction is significantly at risk of uh, ischemia in the future. At the time of this CT scan, the dual energy CT can um, confirm that this bowel loop is still viable. So that's a main advantage uh, over the single energy CT, as sometimes the uh, mural attenuation can be uh, secondary to iodine or bowel hemorrhage. So it's really important to differentiate those since hemorrhage is significantly associated with the uh, bad prognosis uh, in the future. Sure, great. So now after a discussion of GI bleeding, you discussed the role of dual energy CT in the biliary system, uh, in particular the use of the material decomposition techniques in assessing gallstones and, and cholelithiasis and the low KEV uh, virtual monochromatic images and iodine overlay in the evaluation of acute cholecystitis and in the assessment of gallbladder wall gangrene. Uh, in the pancreas, dual energy CT looks to have advantages in the detection of perfusion defects that you might see in patients with necrotizing pancreatitis uh, and in assessing the components of complex pancreatic and peripancreatic collections 
in patients with complicated pancreatitis. In the genitourinary system, your paper details the advantages of dual energy CT in the characterization of urinary calculi, which has sort of been one of the most longstanding recognized benefits of dual energy acquisition. Uh, can you review this topic with us? And then we'll take a look at figure 19, which demonstrates, I think, the strengths of dual energy CT in the analysis of urinary stones. Yeah, yeah. As you mentioned, the the renal stone evaluation has been uh, really evaluated, like thoroughly in the in the past, and it's uh, uh, like probably one of the most common used uh, applications in DCT imaging, especially in the abdomen. Um, as as you may remember, definite treatment of urolithiasis depends really on the location, the size, and the chemical composition of these stones. Uh, as probably around ninety percent of these stones are made of calcium. Uh, approximately 10% of the urolithiasis are made of uric acid. So it's extremely important to differentiate or to identify those stones since the uric acid stones can be treated medically. They can be treated with uh, urine alkalinization, which will not never work if you treat a, a calcium-based stone uh, only with medication. So identifying these stones is important to prevent recurrence of uh, obstructive uropathy in the future. As uh, the conventional CT has a limited, a limited ability of differentiating those stones, the calcium-based and the non-calcium-based stones, uh, just based on their attenuation, since uh, they are overlapping. Uh, the attenuation of a uric acid stone can overlap that of a non-uric uh, acid stone. However, DCT has been shown to be highly accurate at differentiating those stones uh, with diagnostic accuracy ranging from 90 to 100 uh, percent. This is mainly done using the dual energy index, uh, which is the um, uh, um, proportion of attenuation based on the low, low uh, um, KV imaging divided by the high KV imaging. Usually the uric acid stones will have a ratio of less than one, meaning that <clears throat> they have an attenuation value uh, uh, lower at low KV imaging than at higher KV imaging. Right, which is the opposite for the calcium-based stone. Mm -hmm. um, but using a post-processing software, usually everything is done like automatically. You don't have to calculate uh, everything by yourself. Uh, if we look at figure 19, uh, coronal image here, uh, 19A, demonstrating two small stones, one in the lower pole of the left kidney and one uh, obstructing stone in the, le uh, the lower ureter uh, on the left. Those stones are color-coded in red. So using our application, it means that those stones are uh, likely made of uric acid, as opposed to the calcium-based uh, elements, for example, the bony structures, the uh, atherosclerotic plaques uh, being color-coded in blue. So that's the first cue that this, these stones are probably made of uric acid. Right. If you look at uh, figure 19B, uh, I just placed a region of interest within these stones, demonstrating the attenuation values of the stones uh, at First, the mixed images, okay. then the low KV images, then the high KV images. And when reported on the figure 19C, the graph, you can see that these stones will fall lower to the reference value, low to the reference value within the red uh, lines, meaning that they are made of uric acid with a dual energy ratio of less than one. So uh, as these stones were really small, uh, we were able to carefully or uh, adequately uh, uh, predict their composition. And this patient uh, would uh, benefit from uh, medical treatment in order to prevent the second left lower kidney stone to be obstructing uh, in the future. Uh, so that's a, a really key advantage of the ACT in evaluating the renal stones. Great, well, thank you for that. Now, the topic of vascular imaging is, is obviously very important when discussing dual energy CT in the abdomen. Uh, and it actually has been the topic of a, of a radiographics paper uh, by Machida and colleagues, which we published uh, a couple of years ago in, in the July 2016 issue uh, of the journal. Uh, let's close our discussion, though, on I think what is a very important topic, and that is that of metal artifact reduction. Uh, so let's look at figure 27, which I think nicely illustrates the concept of artifact reduction. Uh, by the use of the high KEV virtual monoenergetic or monochromatic images uh, in a patient who has spinal fixation hardware. Yeah, 
So imaging patients with uh, metallic hardware can be extremely challenging, uh, usually associated with a lot of artifacts uh, related to beam hardening, photon starvation, scattered radiation, uh, and evaluating the intra-abdominal structure uh, can be extremely challenging, as I said. Uh, using dual energy CT, especially using the IKEV reconstructions, the virtual mono energy reconstructions, we can significantly reduce the artifacts uh, associated with the metallic hardware. Uh, by uh, increasing the proportion of the uh, information or data set registered by the higher energy photons compared to the lower energy photons. Uh, since we remember that these high energy photons will penetrate or will uh, uh, have a, li a higher likelihood of uh, uh, reaching the detector to create uh, information for, for the radiologist to be reviewed. Uh, for example, in figure 27, we can like uh, clearly see that uh, these images are significantly uh, degraded at uh, uh, low KV images. Or if, uh, if you look at the figure 27C, uh, that's the conventional image you would get as uh, at 7, 70 keV, representing the conventional 120 kVp image you would get with a, a conventional CT. As you increase the uh, kV level from uh, 70 kV to 100, 130, 160, and 190 kV in figure 27G, you can see that the artifacts the straight artifacts created by the spinal hardware is significantly decreased and now, the intra-abdominal structures are adequately evaluated. It's not, it's not perfect, but at least you can rule in or rule out anything acute within the abdomen, uh, as opposed to the figure 27, see where the intra-abdominal bowel loops are barely uh, visible. And this is done uh, without any increase in the radiation dose delivered to the patient. It's only done with the post-processing uh, software, just picking up or highlighting the higher energy uh, information uh, to, to decrease the artifacts. As you uh, will also notice that uh, at higher energy, it comes with an expense that the uh, uh, contrast ratio will be decreased. Everything will become more gray, but at least if you can decrease your artifacts, as I said, you can uh, uh, at least evaluate the, the intra-abdominal uh, structures more adequately. And uh, usually we say that uh, the optimal energy level is really dependent on the material, the, the prosthesis, the number of prosthesis present, the material they're composed of, uh, where they are located exactly. So it's, it's usually uh, better to assess it by uh, uh, using like a, a, uh, a reader approach or if you look at the, the images by yourself, it's not using a fixed number. There's no magic number here. Uh, it's better to use a, uh, usually with our system, we have a, a sliding tool where we can adjust uh, the KV level uh, progressively to ensure the image is optimally uh, opting. Uh, and again, uh, this is a, a significant advantage of the CT over the conventional CT by uh, imaging those patients since uh, metallic prosthesis are becoming more and more uh, common in the aging populations. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Murray, I'd like to thank you for taking the time today to uh, discuss your paper on the use of dual energy CT in the evaluation of the acute abdomen, which again for our readers is one of our featured papers in the current January 2019 issue of Radiographics. Dr. Murray, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much, Dr. Klein. I hope everyone will enjoy uh, our paper and uh, do not hesitate if you have any questions to contact me. Uh, my contact information is in, uh, in the paper. Terrific. Thanks. Thanks very much. You're welcome.